All right, this is going to be a part two here. I just got him talking about um, this uh, fellow's comment there. I appreciate these comments. And uh, again, just a reminder, uh, I think the butt, yes. I think stay off your butts, all right? And Karen, oh, I'm a woman. That's all I know. Okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Alright, okay. And Roderick is, he needs to calm down a little bit. And, okay, so. Uh, Joseph B. Lumpkin has books on this topic that predate the Bible. Okay, so. Uh, first of all, <laughs> uh, the, there's no books that predate the Bible. Alright, so. That's ridiculous in itself. The Bible's the oldest book in the world, and it's not even close. If Joseph Lumpkin is writing books that predate the Bible, then he's a liar, and you better avoid him. You'd be wise to avoid him. I mean, it's um, sort of silly, too. I mean, he's going to sell a lot of books. He's going to be very popular. You know, the crazier his ideas are, the more popular. Look at Stephen King, most popular writer currently in the world today. And he guys a Fruit Loop Looney Tune. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. How do you think this is happening? You think it's everybody but Joseph Lumpkin and his crazy Adam and Eve books? And you think Adam and Eve wrote a book and Joseph Lumpkin got his hands on it? Uh, come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't. Uh, did I go over these already? I listened to the reading and I hear, Lord and God and Savior, this won't hold up in court. Oh, Whose court are you going to, buddy? Take it from a salesman. Uh, BS artist. Gotcha. Wordplay is the game of the day to confuse the slaves. Let all that wish to be deceived. Yeah, okay. Your own words. All right. No. Two creations. Okay. No, no okay. I'm not going to go over all that. Two creations. Come on. That's just nonsense. All right, so I wanted to uh, share this one here. This was long. <clears throat> okay, Flash, I appreciate this. Uh, the story of Noah's Ark is one of the most intriguing stories known to mankind. It, it, is it true? How did it happen? What's well, true? The Bible tells us how it happened. Why do so many say it's a myth? Well, because they... Don't want to believe God is true. Okay, so he's listing uh, the different subjects in this Bible. That, or I'm sorry, in this video. It's in the Bible as well. Okay, so is there worldwide historical evidence for the Great Flood? Yeah, it's overwhelming. Why do many people not believe in the Genesis Great Flood? Well, because they... The Bible says this. I mean, the Bible's got all the answers, right? Uh, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. It's because they don't want to believe in God. It's pretty simple, right? Because their deeds are evil. They love to sin. Mm, just love it love to sin, and therefore they want to pretend like God is not real. And they're, they're going to have to face the music sooner or later, and better sooner than later. Right? Why did God flood the whole earth? Well, that, that's also in the, in the Bible, right? Um, God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that the thoughts and imagination of his heart was only evil, continually. Did God give the wicked time to repent before flooding the earth? Well, that's in the Bible too, right? My day shall be 120 years. 
I think. I thought. There it is. Oh, it was right there in front of my face. Okay, for that. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. Now notice, it doesn't say angels, big dummies. Man. It's talking about man. Man. Man, right? And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. So 120 years, I think, was enough time, more than enough time, to repent. To turn from their wickedness and turn to God. Now, there was a comment I read earlier. Did I skip by it? Something about... I'm going to... Jumping back and forth here. Let's go right there. Oops. Okay. I wanted to do this. There we go. Can I still do it? There. No. Nope. Never mind. There we go. Okay. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. This perfect in his generations, if somebody's telling you he had perfect genes, they're lying to you. They don't know squat. And they're probably um, not saved, because how in the world... Could you believe this nonsense that Noah had perfect genes and from as if there were a perfect gene line from Adam to Noah, right? And the, there's no way that you could say that this isn't connected, this idea that Noah had perfect genes. It's also connected with UFO aliens, right? Because they're, what they're saying is the sons of God are UFO aliens. And that Noah wasn't a son of God. And therefore, Noah wasn't a UFO alien. And only the sons of God are UFO aliens. And they are a different flesh. I'm telling you, this stuff is just absolute nonsense. It's fairy tale. It's fiction, it's make-believe comic book stuff, all right? Noah was just man. That should have been your clue. He was a just man and perfect in his generations. He had faith in his life. He had faith in, G in God. Jesus is God. He had faith in God. He was a just man. He walked with God. All right. It's very simple. It's this idea is unbelievable nonsense that Noah had perfect flesh, perfect DNA, all the way from Adam, and God saved him because he had perfect DNA. <clears throat> it's so ridiculous. So, what's interesting is Noah never had any children after the flood. Okay, was Noah perfect and his wife not perfect? And then therefore Shem, Ham, and Japheth were not perfect? And there is no man living today that has perfect DNA? That's most, it's so ridiculous, but it'll sell books and people will teach it and they'll make profit and they'll turn people away from the truth. I understand that. And I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm just telling you this stuff is absolute nonsense to think this means perfect DNA. It means he was just man, a just man. And he walked with God and his faith was perfect in his generations, in his time, in his life. All right, let's see. Let's see, where is that? There it is, on Hebrews 11. All right, Hebrews 11. By faith, Noah, 
being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. It's not by perfect DNA, which is ridiculous, right? <laughs> Utterly ridiculous. This is all about faith. So when we read here in Genesis 6, verse 9, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. This is speaking about his walking with God, his faith in God. All right, see, so stay away from the fairy tale stuff. All right, it's corrupting your mind, corrupting your thoughts, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that that I just want to address somebody. I, I don't know if I skipped over it or what I did, but somebody else made a comment about that particular mention of Noah being perfect. Okay. So these are like a lot of great questions here by our friend Flash. And let's see. How, let's see. I want to sort of go through some of these. All right. How did God flood the whole earth by water? How many people, why did many people not believe in the, why do many people? Excuse me. Okay. I went over that. Flooded up by water. Did God give the wicked time to repent 120 years? How big was Noah's Ark? About 500 feet, 300 cubits. Um, let's see if we can find that quickly. And the length of the Ark shall be 300 cubits, right? And the breadth 50 cubits and the height 30 cubits. So 300 by 50 by 30. 300 cubits, about a foot and a half, maybe a little more. Um, about 500 feet, I think, is a fair estimate. 500 feet long. Where did God destroy? What did God destroy by the great flood? The whole world? What kind of animals did God save? Everything whose nostrils are its breath of life. Well, everything is men mentioned, right? So, but uh, let's see if I can. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life, and of all that was in the dry land. Oh, that's who died. I'm sorry. Uh, well, let's. I'll just concede I might be wrong on that, uh, but uh, all the animals are mentioned. And they all have, they all breathe through their nostrils, so whatever. All right. What, how did the animals come to Noah's ark? Uh, well, Noah gathered them, right? But, uh, I mean, you really got to credit God, uh, credit God for allowing that to happen. Let's see, and... Who sh that's a great question here. Who closed the door of Noah's Ark? And they that went in, no, oh, right there, there it is, the very first one. And they that went in, went, went in male and female of all flesh, and as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. So it was God that actually shut the door um, to the boat. After everybody got in, can you imagine everybody getting in and the water is rising and the, you know, the world is starting to, you know, flood and, oh no, we got nobody to shut the door. <laughs> Yikes. Well, God was there. God's always there. God will always be there for us to help us and to provide us an escape, just like he provided an escape for Noah and his family. Back then, God provides us an escape from this wicked world, and that's through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. And we will be delivered from this wicked world into a perfect world, a much better world than what we have today. Okay, that's enough.